Hi everybody, I'm Dom Griffin. I'm a film critic and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. It's an ongoing video series where I talk about films, television, pop culture, comics. If you're into any of those subjects, uh, please consider subscribing. As promised in my Juneteenth video, I'll put a little card up if you haven't seen the video. I'm going to be starting a new series on the channel that is me reviving an old column I used to write for Deadshirt.net back in the day. It's called Dark Gable Presents. This is the first episode of that series. What I'm going to do with this video series is the same thing they did with that column back in the day, and that is to highlight older and unsung black films that show sort of more a variety of experiences like in black life, like and not just movies that are like black torture porn and also not just movies that uh tyler perry is involved with so like every other kind of black movie i mean i might do a tyler perry video in this series i'm not, I'm not gonna like lie there's interesting things in that man's filmography but for now that's kind of what i want to do is like it just explore stuff that people maybe don't know about or haven't seen or haven't thought about in a long time i'll also have in the description a link to the old columns so you can kind of see some of the films i've already done and uh, today, we're going to start with the first one for the channel. Now, this one's going to be a little bit unorthodox in the sense that it is not, strictly speaking, a movie. I'm going to be talking about the 1994 Fox television series, Mantis. When I was a kid, I remember watching a series on Fox called Mantis. And Mantis was an acronym for Mechanically Augmented Neurotransmitter Interception System. It was probably an acronym because I don't think Fox owned the Mantis comic book property, like the character from Guardians of the Galaxy, so whatever. But I remember watching it when I was a kid, and it starred uh, a black man in the leading role of a black superhero series. And I remember thinking it was pretty cool. I don't remember very much about it because I didn't watch the entire series. It was pretty short-lived. It lasted less than one full season. But in my mind, I just remember that it was about like a black dude who was in a wheelchair, and he used a special exoskeleton to fight crime. And I thought that was badass because... It is. So I started thinking about it and I was like, oh, you know, what? I should just go back and like watch the show. Like, it's like a cool thing to do. Like, we'll see what happens. And when I started, I started by watching the original TV pilot. Not the first episode of the TV series that aired in August of 1994, but the TV movie feature length pilot that Fox had aired back in January that is what got the TV series going. And it really, really surprised me. And it surprised me because it's pretty fucking incredible. Okay, so the original TV movie pilot of Mantis was created and written by Sam Raimi and Sam Hamm. Sam Raimi, as you know, uh, the director of the original Sony Spider-Man trilogy and a million other great movies. And then Sam Hamm is the screenwriter of Tim Burton's original Batman movies. So like these two have like a pretty great pedigree together. The pilot was directed by veteran TV actor-director Eric Newville, And the show takes place primarily in the fictional Oceanus City, sort of like this made up city that allows them to explore different like urban issues and such. Even though the city was fictional, the actual status quo is very real. The series opens with this situation where there's a hotly debated mayoral race that's coming up between the city's black mayor and then the corrupt white police chief who has launched like this special elite force of cops whose entire job is just beating the shit out of protesters. Sound familiar? But amidst this contentious political climate, the show introduces this mysterious figure, Mantis, who is a masked vigilante crime fighter. He's so-called Mantis, not just because of the acronym of the show, but because he leaves these little miniaturized statuettes of Mantis's manti at the scene of the crime. What's really cool is that when you first are watching the pilot, if you've never watched the show or know anything about it, the show doesn't start out being strictly about Mantis. It's about this city and all the things going on with it. And sort of our viewpoint character is Gina Torres as this woman, Amy, who is a coroner, who is both investigating some interesting things going on, like in dead bodies she keeps finding, and then also trying to figure out who Mantis is after she sees him in action. But the show also presents three black leads who each, if you'd never seen the show before, could be considered to be who Mantis actually is, like his secret identity. There's Bobby Hosea as a hotshot reporter, martial arts master Steve James, who you've definitely seen movies before, as an inner city youth club manager, and also Carl Lumley as Dr. Miles Hawkins, the wheelchair-bound reclusive and well-off scientist who is also a well-known conservative. Now, obviously, we know that the main character is Miles, but as the show is progressing, it treats it like it's a mystery. And it's done very well in the sense that it really does make you think that the person behind the Mantis suit is actually Steve James's character because, like, he's badass and, like, does all this cool martial arts stuff, and, like, that would seem a little bit too obvious. And then the Miles character, outside of being, like, confined to a wheelchair, he has such a, like, pervasive conservative attitude towards, like, the inner city situation. Hey, that is not a man who grew up poor in Lincoln Heights. Well, he got out early. Two basic patents by the age of 15, millionaire at 18, 
MIT on a genius grant. Oof. Here's our boy. Which, in my opinion, set us back maybe 15, 20 years. And the only real affirmative action is what we as black people achieve on our own. That it's hard to imagine him actually fighting crime and being involved and doing anything like good for people. But halfway through, we actually get the real reveal that Miles is Mantis uh, and that he's running the entire operation with his two African science interns, like these teens who like help him like run everything. And once we kind of see that it's really him and we understand what he's up to, the show sort of reveals uh, his secret origin to us, which is that Dr. Miles Hawkins, noted black conservative, was injured in the Watts riots when he was shot in the spine by a police officer while trying to save a child. That act alone radicalized him and moved him in this direction where he developed this exoskeleton so he could walk and so he could do things in the community to help give back to uh, a population of people he's largely written off. So just imagine that. This is a, this is 1994. This is a <laughs> it's a, this is a TV series about a black superhero whose origin is that he was a black conservative who was shot in the spine by a cop. And that is what radicalized him to become a superhero. Once that plot point comes out, the show begins to unravel the ongoing conspiracy about this uneasy truth between two warring gangs in the city who have been putting their issues aside so that, that their like violence would not overshadow this like important uh, mayoral race and then finding out like, who's involved like who's on the take who's corrupt and stuff and it does a really good job of like making an actual singular exciting action movie out of this two-hour tv pilot that creates a mystery sets up a, like this brand new character and then also creates a status quo around the concept of the city that allows for future stories to be like you know pretty political in nature because the actual issues are like realistic while still exploring a more pulpy noir thriller aesthetic with a main character who is a superhero in the sense that he has like a cybernetic suit that allows him to walk but is really much more in line with someone like the shadow or like uh sam raimi's own dark man like the character is a kind of murky and his personal political views are like in flux and like his attitudes toward the world are different and the character is not like flashy and cool like punching people and kicking kickboxing and stuff he's like a menacing figure it's very very much in the mold of something like the shadow where he's like doing good but he's like scary and it's pretty fucking legit. Basically, I can't believe that I could remember this show because it's kind of everything I would like in a series. Like, because the show it has such like a prominently black cast, you're able to have a bunch of lead black figures who all have sort of uh, conflicting political ideologies. So you're able to show a multiple viewpoints of the black experience. Black people are not a monolith, uh, and the mystery element keeps things exciting. You can tell multiple mysteries of. Mantis fighting crime, and then Jane Torres' character getting closer to figure out who he is, and there's sort of like a some romantic tension there. Like it's like it's like perfect. There's like just so much you could play with, and you can do something that's realistic and and moody and dark and exciting, but also still like fun. It's not like you know just like a depressing thing to watch. It explores real life issues through genre, which is like one of my favorite things to do in fiction. And honestly, even though like if you're watching it now, you know like the visuals are a little bit cheesy and the aesthetic is somewhat cheap feeling, but like it has a really cool vibe and like a unique character to it that. Even though it's like older and like some of the special effects are kind of hackneyed, the show made some very deliberate creative decisions to create a very unique visual identity. And it was really exciting for the time, you know what I mean? Especially at a time where like you have Meteor Man, which is like a black superhero movie that's a little more comedic in tone, and then like Blank Man, which is like a straight parody, like to have a serious figure telling these stories. It's like very, very special. Like it's like such, it's like, it's like my ideal show. And it came out when I was fucking eight and I barely remember it. But. Of course, <laughs> the reason that I barely remember it is that the actual show that aired is almost nothing like the pilot that we're talking about. Despite the strong ratings that this pilot brought into Fox, when they decided to move it to series, they wanted to make a ton of changes to the actual like concept of the show, and creators Sam Raimi and Sam Hamm were like, we're not going to handicap the show like this, we're going to fucking leave. So they brought in like sci-fi writer Bryce Zabel to figure out how to make a, a more Fox-friendly version of the show, and... Uh, unsurprisingly, they replaced all of the black characters who are not Carl Lumley with a new cast of largely white people. So instead of Miles working on a suit and fighting crime with his two African interns, he now has like a quirky British white science guy who's like his partner, and then they meet like a plucky, annoying white messenger guy who becomes like his sidekick, and then like Gina Torres' character is replaced by like a black cop and it just becomes like this regular ass show. Everything about the show that is cool goes away. He no longer is kind of like the shadow. He's much more just like a guy in a robot suit. And even though like you still have the ability to tell like more grounded realistic stories that are thrilling, the show as it progresses just moves farther and further away from the, the tone of the plot into full on like time travel parallel universe stories like some of the show is good i'm not gonna like pretend like it's just a bad show necessarily some of it's like it's, it's not the worst 
But it's such a far cry from what Raimi and Ham set up in the pilot, and it's just so much less good. I would have rewatched much more of the series when I was doing this, but after watching the pilot, every subsequent episode I watched, I hated more and more. Even though it was like watchable, even though like it had like its entertainment moments, it just felt so stupid and meaningless. And it was so insulting that they would pervert such a good show concept into something this, you know, interchangeable and, and replaceable. And, you know, fucking lo and behold, like, it failed. Like, they didn't have to cancel before the finale ever aired. And, you know, props to Carl Lumley for sticking with the show. Like, it was important to have, like, a black lead at the time on a show like this. And he does a fantastic job. I, I, I love Carl Lumley. I mean, who the fuck doesn't? But he was just one piece of the puzzle of why the show was so special. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just that it was a black guy in the lead surrounded by a bunch of white faces. It was that it was a bunch of black people, and they were all different. And they all interacted, and they all had different opinions on things. And, like, it, it showed a microcosm of, like, a real city, and it used that reality to tell fantastical stories with, like, a pulp bent, and, like, that's so cool, you know? And who knows? Maybe if the show had actually continued in the vein of the pilot, it might have still failed. I mean, this is Fox. They might have still canceled it anyway. Like, tons of fantastic shows just failed on that network for a variety of reasons. But given the strong response to the pilot, you have to wonder what it would have done if it had stuck around in that format rather than just like making it up on the fly and constantly changing things to try to make it better when what they already had worked so well. Really, the more you think about it, a show like Mantis walked so that shows like Watchmen and Lovecraft Country could run, you know? Who's to say what the landscape of television would be like if this show actually did continue as originally intended? Like, sure, it could have been canceled, but it could have made something really, really special. Right now, the only place to actually watch Mantis is on Amazon. It's not streaming anywhere. You can like buy and rent the entire first season of the show. And I definitely strongly suggest that if you're interested at all, that you just buy or rent the first two episodes on Amazon because that comprises the TV movie pilot. I just don't think it's really worth watching the rest of the series to pay money to see how insulting Fox was to its viewers at the time. It's a major bummer that the series never actually happened, but the movie itself in this one contained version is a really, really great piece of pop cultural history, and I think it's a really, really important thing to watch and see and talk about and share. It's like actually one of my favorite things that Sam Raimi's ever been involved in. It's, it's really, really good. And I think when you see it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So that is the first episode of Dark Able Presents. I know I picked kind of a weird one to like start the series off with, but this was really on my mind and I just could not help talk about it and share it with you guys. We'll have another episode in a couple of weeks. If you guys have any specific movies you want to see me check out that like you think would be good for the series, please feel free to tell me in the comments. If uh, you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'll have another new review out later this week. Uh, and if you want to be the first to see when it comes out, hit the little bell icon to get notifications. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you like the video. I hope you take some time out and check out Mantis. It is very, very cool and very special. And I, I, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day.